Our guest in this segment is the mayor of the city of Martinsburg, Kevin Knowles. Mr. Knowles, good morning to you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yeah, how's your morning going so far? Oh, good. Good, <laughs> good on you, but, Bill. Good better, on you, Bill. Better than mine, That's Kevin. Good good my, on you. my morning is not going well so far. I want to get this. Well, one of the things I always admired about you is that when you were wrong, you admitted it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I did misspeak. Who misspeak. Who would you like? But nobody to, noticed. Who would you like well, to? They do now. In this segment, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> who would you like to offend in this segment? Well, who are we going after? Uh, <laughs> no answer. Uh, actually, you could almost see the list rolling through his head. <laughs> there is there is a few up there, but I'm not, I mean, fair not to say that here. At yeah, least yeah. I, I'm not going to be like Bill and just blurt it out and be wrong. No, Bill, does, that's the great thing about being Bill. He's at that age. He doesn't care. He doesn't care anymore. I take a pause and say, there we go. Yeah. So our, our comment section is having fun this morning. They're out for blood, Bill. They're out for blood. <laughs> no, for some He's out to read blood. those later, see what it was all about. And they've been very selective as well, Rob. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you ought to hear what Bill says during the breaks <laughs> if you think you're angry now. Just just wait till I get that hidden microphone going. Uh, Kevin, let's talk about some uh, unencumbered funds with the city and uh, what uh, what is the date you'll be dealing with those funds? Well, uh, you know, every year we, we, we put a budget together and uh, the 2020 uh, 20, 20, budget that we, that we just went through, 23-24, uh, uh, we uh, have a $2 million unencumbered balance. Uh, before everybody gets that knee-jerk reaction, uh, the reason for that is, one, that the, the, the city spends their money wisely, and two, you know, you when you do make those budgets, you budget for personnel and, and, and different things. And, and keep in mind, when we budget for the police department, we budget for 50 officers. That's what we're set for. And for a year, we were down 13 officers, so those are 13 salaries that were not paid that, uh, you know, that we're starting to, to see back. But... The good news on that end is we're not down 13 anymore. We're probably down six or seven. It takes a while to rebuild that up to re, uh, retirements and all that. So uh, we're looking very promising in the in the police department getting it to its full strength again. And now the the funding that, that the the funds that we do have will be meeting Wednesday night and and identifying some of uh, the things that uh, what we call I might get the term wrong, but in the budget you would put like a a red mark to it. These are our wish list that we wish we could do in our budget, but because we can't because it wouldn't be fiscally sound through the budget. So we uh, we have some things that, that we're looking at. Keep in mind that uh, one of the big, biggest issues we've had was uh, uh, Lambert Pool. Uh, Lambert Pool, I'd, I'd like to remind everybody that the, the city paid for that to get that uh, open, paid for the engineering, and, and uh, Lambert Pool has uh, done a wonderful job this year. Uh, and then we have plans in the future for a an upgrade of everything there, a new pool and some other things at the rec center. So uh, that takes a lot of funding to do that, and, and of course that's you know that funding is what hopefully isn't falling on one source. Hopefully it's other sources. But in the meantime, we can start planning for that. You know, we can start pu putting some money aside for projects like that, especially a project like that, because that's going to be a I would say a, a twelve to thirteen million dollar project once you start. Uh, doing it because you don't want to, you don't want to do a job uh, up there at the rec center with the pool, and then have to come back in 10 years. You want to be able to have a 15, 20 year use plan out of that, so you're not spending that kind of money. Kevin, is there still some talk or some aspiration of having an indoor pool? Uh, you know what, Bill, the the talks that I get about indoor pool is not coming from Parks and Rec. It's it's coming from it's coming from all of us, and, and we're in conversations. At least we have been in conversation with, with the YMCA, uh, and the, uh, it's my understanding that they've done studies here in Berkeley County and Jefferson County, and that w w w if and when they do pull the string on this, it, uh, that's that's when we're going to hear it. But right now, we're not hearing anything. Okay, yeah, I've been hearing through the through the rumor mill, uh, YMCA is interested in one of the two counties. Has it progressed to the stage of just casual discussion? It has, you know what, has not come across my desk other than casual. Um, I think we've asked, we've asked several times for some updates, and uh, I think getting the information, maybe because it was summertime, people on vacations or what, but uh, I don't have a, any kind of definitive uh, direction as what which way they're going. I've heard rumors about one county versus the other, but uh, it's my understanding that they're not hearing everything. Also, I'm hearing also rumors that. That they're just going to do daycare, you know. That's what they're looking. Yeah, for. I've heard the same thing. Yeah, yeah. so, uh, you know, daycare is great, 
But, you know, uh, if you're going to do everything, you might as well do the indoor pool also. Forgive me if you just answered this. What happens to the unspent salary money for the 13 officers? Or any un, any open office of, at the end of the fiscal year, you've got a, a pile of money. What happens to that money? We'll, we'll be deciding that on Wednesday. Uh, keep in mind, we have projects that are going on, City Hall, that we got to pay for. Other items so it's that, available for other things. It's available for other things, yes. Because we, okay. we've already budgeted for that 50 already. So it could go to a park or it could go to a street or it could go it to... It could, yes. Okay. Do you have a commitment to the rainy day fund, the percentage of a surplus you have to make? There is, and I, I, I don't know the number to that, but there is part of that would go to that rainy day fund and uh, and put some money aside for the, the Lambert project is, is our hope, so... What is the general overall fiscal health of the city, Kevin, in regards to projects that have to be done and completed and revenues coming in? Well, take a look around. I mean, you know, the city of Martinsburg is really thriving and seeing a lot of new, exciting things happening. A lot uh, of new construction down Queen Street. Mm -hmm. What's going on down there? I know City Hall, but what else is... Well, what we've done, uh, we've, we have gotten a grant to level off the sidewalks. So they came, they, there's a company that comes in, they chip their sand down to make them level. And then we've taken upon ourselves, the city, which is something new that we haven't done as far as I know ever, is if there needs to be sidewalks replaced down in downtown, we've replaced those sidewalks on the city's cost, not uh, the owner's cost. Because it typically would be the owner's expense. Correct. That's how... Uh, does, I don't. I can't say that I like that. But um, is there yeah. a, is there a difference between who's responsible for the curb versus the sidewalk itself? Well, I, you know what? That's a good question. I mean, uh, keep in mind that that's not a city street. It's a state-owned street. So I don't know if the state has a, a play in that or not. But uh, how about in any of the city streets when it comes to replacing sidewalks? Does it always include the curb I, I, as well? I, uh, I want to say yes. Uh, you know, I, I could be pretty, pretty positive and say yes on that. Parking downtown is uh, we've been talking about parking garage, but one of the uh, uh, our posters a second ago said about meters having to pay uh, for a parking meter, but a lot of them has been done by app now. It says it's confusing. How is it? Can you take a Pocket full of change and put in the meter now. Yeah, you can still you can still put the the quarters in. Yeah. Yes, you can. And but uh, you know I, we say that, and then I go up to uh, uh, Hagerstown, and they're on the app system. I went to a ball game up there, and that app cost me fifteen bucks to park for a game. So, uh, and that was right in the middle of downtown. Uh, so I mean, our parking is uh, comparably to other places is uh, inexpensive. Um, uh, everything's technology these days. Not saying that. I'm technology savvy, and it, 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 it could be a, uh, a problem for other individuals. And also the app uh, charges a little bit more than the, the It's 25 cents. cents for an hour, but then the app is 45 cents yeah. in, in addition to the So you have a cents. choice. You have so a choice whether to bring quarters with you or, or do the app. You know? Let me go back to Parks and Rec for a few minutes. Uh, the county supports Parks and Rec. The city supports Parks and Rec. Uh, the Parks and Rec has also self-generated funds as well. Uh, is there a set formula for amount of money the city or the county puts in a Parks and Rec? You know, I, I think, there, if I'm correct, as I understand it, that their money comes from the, the hotel motel tax. I, and then they come to the, they come for additional funding if... Yeah. Yeah. So the 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 answer on the city's part would be no. There is no st standard of what we would put in, mm -hmm. depending on what they need. Of course, if you know all of the parks that you see in the city are city-owned properties, so we've never, um, in my as long as I've been around since 2012, and have never uh, turned down parks or rec for anything that they needed for within the city parks. Question from Jackie Long. Please ask the mayor why we cannot have the trash bill sent every two months, like the water bill, instead of once a year. $540 is tough for many people to come up with all at once. If you pay it within a couple of weeks after you receive it, that lowers it to $442.80. But that's still a large uh, chunk of money to come up with, especially uh, when due at that time. Well, you know, and I, and I can appreciate that because uh, I have to pay that too. Uh, 
I don't have the answer in front of me right now, but that's something that I can check into. Keep in mind when we pay uh, county taxes and everything like that, that's once a year. They don't bill me every every two months for that. So mm -hmm. it could be just a, an accounting thing that I don't have an answer. I don't know, but I, I can find that out for her if she wants. That would be good to know. And Ken Matson asked the question, uh, what are your thoughts about a, an event center shared by the county and the city? Can you see my hand? Well, they can't see my hands. Yeah. I'd love to see that. I, I would love to see that. I mean, everywhere I go, you know, you keep in mind that we have uh, one of the uh, best sporting teams here in in the state, and we have to travel four, five, six hours for for to play in, in, in state tournaments. We can't hold a uh, an event for the municipal league that, that I go to because uh, we don't have the facilities to hold the big event for for the yearly meetings and. One, we don't have the, the capacity for a room for that, and it's just uh, it's well needed. Uh, whether whether or where it's going to happen, I don't know. And I've I've over the years, Bill, I think even when you were uh, on the county council, that uh, there were conversations about different things along the way, but and nothing ever took off. And all, all I can say, if you're going to do it, do it now because you're going to run out of land to put it on. Yeah. In those days, it was going to be privately financed, and uh, the private money did not come through. I'm not sure there's serious talk at that time between the city and the county doing something publicly financed. Uh, and, I, and I think at this, this time, uh, you know, that, that was years ago. Yeah. I mean, that's probably about 15 years ago, if I'm correct. And times have changed. We have bigger companies here that, that are involved. I mean, you know, you got the Meredith Park is sponsored by the hospital up there in, in, in Hagerstown. Well, why can't we have a, a PP&G Park or a Clorox Park, whatever you want to call it, and uh, have some kind of staple here? But uh, I'm all for that. I'm all for sitting down and talking about it. I'm all, all, all for sitting down and doing the footwork. Uh, as far as the financing, that's something we'd have to take a look at. And, that you know, that may or may not be something that could be bonded out that, that we could just uh, uh, move forward with it. Any idea how much money you'd be talking about? I would imagine, just off the top of my head, that would that probably would be a, a thirty plus million project. Oh. And and the point that you made, the land is becoming progressively yes. more scarce. And where you put it? I mean, I love going up to Hagerstown and having that right right in downtown. I just say, mm -hmm. I, I wish I had a spot. I wish it was something that we could do because it reminds me you, you, you go you go to a, a Gaelic football game in in, in Ireland. Those big stadiums, Croke Park is right in the middle of a neighborhood, and it's just a, it's just a great a great way to uh, network and and uh, hang out and have some fun. Yeah, Wrigley Field. Yeah, there you go. You know, Indianapolis Motor Speedway. If you've ever mm -hmm. been there, you're driving down the road. There's a 7-Eleven. Oh, there's the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And, yeah. and Baltimore, both yeah. football and uh, baseball. Yeah. Yep. So those, that's a movement that's been made to kind of get back into the cities for these uh, facilities, mm -hmm. and it's a Usually it worked out pretty well for the city itself in terms of reviving neighborhoods and whatever. A few weeks ago, we had um, the developer of the garage whose name is Diego, Diego Lasada. And he shared with us a vision, kind of a 10, 15-year vision of Martinsbury being a destination of restaurants. And I'm not sure he mentioned walking mall. That might be my addition to it, but sort of a, a shining destination of restaurants and entertainment venue and all of that. Does that resonate with what you see and what the the uh, the council sees? Well, I would say yes, it does with me that, uh, you know, we have had uh, conversations. Well, we, we, we just applied for what you call a, the raise grant, that, uh, the federal grant that was supposed to put everything together in one package, extend the trails, do some restoration of the, the creeks, Within the city, and and also to uh, to enhance any any of the business in, is in the downtown, and and I can tell you that uh, although we didn't get it, we were very highly rated, and I believe the reason why we didn't get that grant was uh, because uh, we're not a uh, we're not we're not a, a state that is in the middle of an election, but Pennsylvania is a very important state that they're. Uh, uh, they sent it to a little small town in, 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 in Pennsylvania instead of us, but we've been told that we've been very highly rated to make sure that we get in again for it. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're seeing that type of growth, and, and part of that is, I guess probably said a word around, Ballards. Bollards? Bollards, Bollards that, that could go up and down so that mm -hmm. if you do want to block off an area for something that's uh, 
that's something that uh, uh, we're looking at. But there's a balance that comes with that too, because as as real estate becomes more expensive, the more difficult for people to live there, and then you end up displacing folks who are living there to go someplace else. Is is that part of the long term plan as well to 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 get ahead of that? We still have to deal with people. Well, you know, are... we we still want to. Uh, at least, in, I can only speak for the city. Um, in the city, you know, we have uh, the people that have been here. Born and raised here, mm -hmm. and we want to want to make sure that we make it conducive for them and not too expensive for them that they have to to to, to get up and move somewhere else because the everywhere you go it's getting or a more great real more. estate opportunity to sell. Well, well, you have a great opportunity to sell, but then you got to go buy something, which you know to me is you know you, I, I remember someone telling me about a week or so ago that they they got a great price on their land. I said, but where are you going to go? <laughs> I mean, where are you going to go? Yeah. Kevin, there's a new traffic pattern on Woodbury and Queen that's causing a lot of uh, confusion. Uh, what's the logic of the traffic pattern? What's it going to do? Well, I can tell you that uh, Woodbury has been a conver conversation piece for the city for the last 18 months. Uh, Councilman Baker, uh, very highly involved in that, happens in, in his, his ward and, and the neighborhood and the people in the neighborhoods were complaining about uh, the excessive speed uh, and, and using it as a, uh, as a shortcut to get to, to, route, uh, to Route 45 to go to Shepherdstown. And, and so they, they, we had uh, CEC come in and do an evaluation. And CEC, Ben? Is an engineering company okay. Okay. Uh, that we have contracted. And they came in and uh, put this in to, to modify and slow down and redirect traffic. Uh, just like anything else. You hear roundabouts, people freak out. <laughs> but once they get on them, and after a month or two, you, it's like they were always there, you know? So it's, it's an adjustment. I think we had 45 people we had to pull over uh, in one day just to kind of let them know and give them a nudge that you can't do that, you can't turn around in parking lots and stuff like that. Yeah, that's what they're doing, they're going to 7-Eleven right yeah, above. Yeah, it, it, right now it's, it's all a warning process. We don't want to be ticketing anybody. We just want to, uh, this is also in conjunction with the state. You know, again, that is that road, Queen Street, is not a city road. It's a state road. So you, it's not like we were the only ones that are involved in these decisions. And I think we also we also put a bike lane in there now, which we want to make it conducive for people who ride bikes. And, and somewhere down the road, I'd like to see some uh, sidewalks put up there uh, where they're not. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of places within the city that uh, don't have sidewalks, and I think... Uh, Sidewalks are very, very important. Mayor Kevin Knowles, our guest here on the program. Uh, Kevin, in regards to the city council, pretty much consistent. You've got uh, one new member, but uh, re replacing uh, Corey. But otherwise, uh, everybody's kind of back. Is uh, the same chemistry? Is uh, are everybody getting along? Everything uh, working out well? Well, I mean, everybody has their their own uh, thoughts on how things should be done, and and. and you know, uh, I have not seen since day one as being mayor where there was any controversy uh, between council people. They they have their votes. So they have every right to vote. We don't have a 100% uh, uh, approval from everybody. There's always, not always, but quite a few times you'll have one that, that'll vote no for whatever reason, and another time will be another person will vote no. It's not the same person. The uh, budget for the city is $52 million? It's roughly fifty-two million. Yes. What's the fastest growing area of the budget right now? You're going to get dead air space on that one, buddy. I'd have to get back to you on that one. All right. So, uh, when we talk with the county, they talk about jail costs. For the city, how is that working out? Do you have specifics on that? I don't. Uh, you know, we also are in the county, so I mean, county. Do you pay separate? To the jail there, fees? There, there are fees that we have to pay right. for the jail fee, yes. I don't know what that number is exactly, but it's not it's not the number that the county would have, of course. A smaller population yeah. in the city, yeah. right? Uh, do you also go through the day report center? Or, or once a we person's have, in the system, we, does that go through the county? We have individuals that, uh, uh, if, they go, if, they're going, if they're going to jail, they're not being seen by, most likely not being seen by our city judge. So they're, they're, if they're going through the magistrates on the county level or the judges, then it's up to the judges and, and magistrates to uh, deem whether they go to day report or not. We are looking at a program through the city 
called the LEAD program. Uh, it's an intervention and diversion program that the police department will be able to use. We're, we have the last piece that I've been able to work on when I was working with the county, putting all these services together, was a, a sobriety uh, a, a, a sobriety uh, station. So that well, I'm probably saying I'm saying it wrong. It's it's really more of a PI facility, public intoxication. Mm -hmm. Right now, over the years, I mean, 15, 20 years ago, Eastridge used to have a place where you could bring people down and hopefully supply them services. We've gotten more service, more people involved. We've, uh, the city and county, uh, have uh, committed $200,000 of that opioid funding to go to Eastridge to build this sobering facility so that uh, law enforcement don't have to keep people on their benches, in their in their holding cells, so that officers can get out there and do the work that they need to do and not be a babysitter and also have an opportunity for those individuals that are intoxicated uh, that uh, they have somebody there that they could talk to and hopefully move them into the right direction. Keep it in mind that all this time we talk about opioids, uh, alcohol is the number one addiction in the state of West Virginia and it's not being addressed, so we're, we're, we're taking a look at that. We, I worked with uh, uh, Eastridge on that, and, and uh, the county, uh, and uh, the county and I, uh, the city council and the county commissioner, are working together in this project, which is monumental in my in my in my book. Here, yeah. two minutes left. Is there anything that you wanted to address that you haven't yet addressed? No, I, I mean that was. I think that was the one that uh, we hadn't talked about, and it's a very very important uh, program because it's not going to only be able to be used for city police, but state police, and, uh, the uh, the county deputies, and, and also other counties surrounding us. So it's a it's a one-year pilot for us to, to, to get this up and running, and, and we feel that uh, uh, we're, we're, we're doing very well moving forward as a city in, in addressing the uh, substance abuse disorder problems within the city. Is that grant-funded, did you say? No, that, that, that came from the opioid settlement money. I see. Uh, and we're, we're going to also, we have another... Two hundred thousand dollars that we're uh, we're going to be identifying organizations to where this this funding will go. So uh, services and everything, maybe Martinsburg Initiative, different services like that. Mar Martinsburg Initiative gives us three three social workers for the city police, and uh, we're hoping to get another social worker on also. So the settlement money has started coming in. No, there was that original. The original money came in, yes. Okay. Uh, that's been in, that's being distributed. There hasn't been anything coming from the first foundation yet. Any idea when that might happen? I have no idea. All right. Kevin, thank you very much. Final word is yours. If you have anything, this is the time to spout it. <laughs> hey, Bill. <laughs> Bill, you got, it? you got anything you want to throw out there? <laughs> if, I, if I spout it all now, they'll have a lot of conversation going right. on. I did notice you used the word babysitting yeah, quite I bravely. <laughs> I did too. Very bravely. I and like inflation. It. You also introduced inflation several times. <laughs> Kevin, thank you. All right, thank you.